Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thanks so much for joining us for Episode 25 of Season 2 of Live with Annie. We are always happy to see you here, and it means a lot that you've made the time to be with us. So thank you. We are in Chicago this week for the H&H America show, but we didn't want to miss a chance to connect with you, so we have pre-recorded this episode. My team will be here live to answer questions in the chat, so please show them some love, send them some hearts, and add your questions and comments in the chat. I'll be sure to check comments later, too, in case there are any questions they can't answer. If you know someone else who you think might enjoy the information that we share, we'd love it if you'd tell them about Live with Annie, too. The easiest way to do that is to tag them while you're watching. That will take them directly to the episode so they can watch, too. To tag someone, type the at symbol, followed by their name, click on that, and submit your comment to them. Last week, we shared a mini trunk show of totes and accessories, sharing six simple-to-make bag patterns, as well as several really easy accessories patterns. If you missed last week's episode or want to watch it again, remember that all of the episodes of Live with Annie are available online. You can watch them on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, or by going to byannie.com live. Because everything is in one place, I find it easiest to go to the Bayani.com live link. We'll put up all the links so that you can find them easily. For the past two weeks, we did a little mini trunk show of projects for purses, totes, and accessories. And we showed several projects, including these fun two totes. Both of these were constructed with just one large piece of quilted fabric that folds to form the front bottom and back of the bag. Most of those patterns indicate that the maker should use non-directional fabrics until they're familiar with the process, so the patterns don't include instructions for using directional fabrics. But using a directional fabric is certainly possible for any of these projects, and it's really quite easy to ensure that a directional design will be upright on both sides. To show the steps, we're going to play our Using Directional Fabrics video now. We'll be back when it's done for some important announcements, so be sure to stay with us to the end. Hi, I'm Annie with ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. In this video, I will share some techniques for using directional fabrics when making projects using our patterns. We love being able to use a large variety of fabrics in our projects, and we often run into prints that have very obvious directional designs. Those types of fabrics can give stunning results if used properly, but depending on the design of the project, a few extra steps may be needed. For instance, let's take a look at this get out of town bag. As you can see, one piece of fabric is used to make the body of the bag. It is joined in the middle at the top by attaching a zipper to each end of the piece. So the body starts here, in the middle of the top, comes down the front, around the bottom, up the back, and ends in the middle of the top. As you can see, a directional fabric could be problematic for this bag. Unless we take a few special steps to deal with the directionality, the design is going to be upside down on either the front or the back. So depending on the pattern you've picked and how the project is designed, you may see a note on the pattern cover that says, avoid directional designs until you are familiar with the project. Additional fabric and other techniques may be needed if using directional fabrics. In this video, I will share some of those other techniques with you so that you will be able to use directional fabrics with professional results. Please note that all Biani patterns will include complete instructions for cutting pieces, and many are appropriate for non-directional or directional fabrics. For patterns where a directional fabric could be problematic, the pattern will either give instructions for using a directional fabric, or it will state that you should avoid directional fabrics until you understand the process. Obviously, we can't cover every pattern here, 
and you will need the pattern in order to know what sizes to cut for each piece. But let's talk in general about some of the ways you can modify your pattern to use directional fabrics. Specifically, this video will cover how to prepare directional fabrics before quilting or sewing, and how to work with directional fabrics which have already been quilted. Let's talk first about how to prepare directional fabrics before quilting. The steps are very easy, but you need to consider them before you begin cutting and sewing. Let's start by looking at a few bags that will require special consideration when using directional fabrics. As you can see, on each of these bags, the body of the bag is a continuous piece, which forms the front, bottom, and back of the bag. To ensure that the fabric is right side up on both the front and the back, the easiest solution is to fix the fabric before it is quilted in the cutting process. To do that, instead of cutting just one piece, we will cut two pieces of fabric, adding a half an inch seam allowance on the side where the fabrics will be seamed. This enables us to rotate one piece, then sew the pieces back together, making a single piece of the right size, but with the fabric upright on each end. The seam joining the pieces will be hidden. Here I have two pieces for an open wide 2.0 bag. With right sides together, we will position the two pieces so that the design is upright on each piece and all edges are aligned. Then we will sew the pieces together along the bottom edges with a half inch seam and press the seam open. We will then have a piece that measures the size called for in the pattern for the bag body, and we can proceed just as the pattern directs. We'll align this piece with the lining fabric and soft and stable and quilt it. Then we can cut a bag body from that quilted piece. Just be careful to position the seam that is in the middle in the center of the piece so that it is hidden on the bottom. You will follow that same process to prepare the fabric for any of these other projects, referring to the pattern to get the sizes needed for each. Here's another project that needs special attention if using directional fabrics. This mixer cover is made using our In the Mix pattern. As you can see, just as for the other projects we just examined, the body of the cover is made of one piece of fabric. On this project, the side strip wraps around to make the left side, top, and right side of the cover. Using a directional fabric for this project is very similar to the techniques we just covered. However, there is one important difference. Because the piece is open at the bottom, we need to sew these pieces together along the top edge rather than the bottom edge. This ensures that the design will be positioned correctly on each side of the cover. As you can see, it's easy to use a directional fabric for these projects. You just need to plan ahead and prepare the fabrics before you quilt. But what happens if you've got a piece of fabric already quilted? How can you make it work without having a big bulky seam in your project? At Biani, we tend to work primarily with pre-quilted fabrics. We make a lot of bags, and having a roll of already quilted fabric saves a significant amount of time for us. It also helps us make better use of the fabrics. However, if one of these pre-quilted pieces used a directional fabric, we used to agonize over how to use it for a project that needed special considerations, such as an open wide or get out of town. We didn't want to have a big bulky seam in the bottom of the bag, nor did we want to have to figure out how to cover the raw edges of that seam. Fortunately, we discovered a great technique that makes joining the pieces easy. This method was shared by Sue Ellen at Linda Z's in Arlington Heights, Illinois. Sue Ellen teaches many of the Biani bag making classes at Linda Z's, and she showed this method on a recent video tutorial. Thank you so much, Sue Ellen. Note that this method is different from the process to prepare fabrics before quilting, so pay attention. We especially like Sue Ellen's method because it is quick and easy and results in little added bulk. And because it doesn't require any additional quilted fabric, you can use it even if you've already cut the pieces for your project. 
It does require that you have small strips of unquilted fabric cut from both the main and lining fabrics. So if you've already quilted everything, you may need to unquilt a bit of fabric or just use another fabric and make it a decorative element. This method results in about a half an inch of unquilted fabric showing right in the middle of the quilted fabric on both the main and lining fabric sides. Normally this area is going to be on the bottom of the bag or in an area that is covered, so it's not going to be very noticeable. Here's another tip. This method is also great to use when your pre-quilted fabric pieces aren't big enough to cut some of the project pieces. By cutting and joining two shorter pieces, you may be able to better utilize pieces of pre-quilted fabric. For instance, we joined two small scraps of leftover quilted fabric to make this piece. It's just the right size to make a small clam-up bag. So you may find this method helpful even when you aren't using directional fabrics. Okay, let's go through the process to join two pieces of quilted fabric using Sue Ellen's technique. For this example, we're going to prepare the side strip for a small in-the-mix cover. Since we are using fabric that has already been quilted, we will skip over the cutting and quilting instructions for the quilted pieces that are at the beginning of the pattern. Instead, we'll go straight to the section titled Cut Quilted Fabric. The beauty of this method is that we can cut the piece exactly as directed in the pattern. So I've cut a side strip using the measurements in the pattern. I need to join these pieces across the width, so I will cut this piece in half across the width. You'll measure the height of the piece and divide it in half to know where to cut. Of course, if you prefer, you don't need to start with this large piece. You can just cut the two shorter pieces by cutting each half the height of the size directed in the pattern. We will also need to cut two strips of unquilted fabric. From the exterior or main fabric, we will cut a strip measuring one inch by the width of the piece. From the interior or lining fabric, we will cut a strip measuring one and a half inches by the width of the piece. Again, if you don't have unquilted fabric on hand, you can cut these strips from other fabric, or you may unquilt a piece of fabric. Once our pieces are cut, we need to rotate one of the quilted pieces so that the design is upright on each side before we sew them back together. As we mentioned before, how these pieces are positioned will depend on the design of the project you are making. For the In the Mix cover, we're going to join the pieces at the top. So we'll rotate them like this, fold them over so right sides are together, and we'll join them along this seam. But we're not going to sew these together. I'm going to show you the technique in a minute. If, on the other hand, we're making an open wide bag, our pieces would be joined in the middle at the bottom. So I've got these two directional pieces that I want to use, and I'm going to rotate them so that I'm joining at the bottom rather than at the top. So it's going to depend on your pattern. Let's work together to join the pieces for our In the Mix cover. So again, we're going to join them on the top edges. So let's begin by positioning the one inch main fabric strip in place. With right sides together, align the one inch strip on the main fabric side of one of the quilted pieces. It doesn't matter which one you do. And I'm going to pin that in place along the top edge of the main fabric. Then I'll flip this over so my lining side is up and with right sides together I'll align the one and a half inch lining strip on the lining side of that piece. And I can pin or clip that in place. Then we're going to sew through these layers with an accurate quarter inch seam. Then press the seams up. Pin the lining strip to the quilted fabric away from the seam. And then we'll join our other two pieces. I'm going to get my iron out of the way. 
Now we're ready to join these two pieces. So with right sides together, we're going to align the other long edge of that main fabric strip along the edge on our other piece. So it will be the appropriate edge. Again, on this one, we're joining the top edges. On another project, you might be joining the bottom edges. So we're going to align those, making sure, and this is really important, make sure that your sides are aligned as well as your top, because when you sew this, you want this to be a nice straight piece. Sew through the two layers with an accurate quarter inch seam. When you open the piece, unpin the lining strip. Then fold the lining over, turning its raw edges under, and press. There are several options for stitching this in place. Sue Ellen recommends stitching from the main fabric side using a stitch in the ditch or edge stitch foot. I like that method as I can completely hide the stitching on the outside. To ensure that the lining doesn't move, I just use basting tape or a glue stick to hold the lining strip in place on back. You may also stitch from the lining side. Just keep in mind that the bobbin thread in that case will show on the other side, so choose your thread accordingly. Okay, our bag body pieces are joined and the design is upright on each side. We have a small half inch unquilted strip in the middle of the fabric on both the main fabric side and the lining side. But that's going to be covered by the handle on this project, so it's not going to bother me at all. If we wanted, we could quilt through the layers to kind of camouflage this strip, as I did on this piece for this clam up bag. You'll follow this same process for other projects that are made with one strip wrapping around from front to back or even from side to side. Just be careful to position the fabrics properly before you sew them together. Again, the design of the project will determine where you sew. We hope you've enjoyed learning these simple techniques for working with directional fabrics. Whether you are preparing the fabrics before quilting or you are working with pre-quilted fabrics. As you've seen, these easy techniques will open a whole new world of fabric choices to you. We can't wait to see the projects that you make and how you use them, so be sure to share pictures of your finished projects with us. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube by using at Patterns by Annie. You may also email photos to us at marketing at If you liked this video, please give us some feedback by clicking on the like button below. Remember to hit the subscribe button too, so you are sure to be notified when we post new videos. Thank you so much for watching. Happy stitching! We hope you've enjoyed learning how easy it is to work with directional fabrics and that you found some fun ideas for new Biani patterns to make. As always, please be sure to check with your favorite local quilt shop to get the patterns and supplies for your projects. If they don't have them, remember that they can order all Biani products directly from us or their favorite distributor. Let's all do our part to keep our local quilt shop strong and successful. And of course, if you don't have a local quilt shop, you may also order directly from us at Biani.com. We will be introducing four updated and one brand new pattern at the show in Chicago this week. These include Night and Day, Pack It In 2.0, Get Out of Town 2.1, Travel Duffel 2.1, and Travel Essentials 2.0. We have been shipping patterns to our distributors and local quilt shop customers for the past couple of weeks, so there's a good chance that your local quilt shop already has them in stock. So please be sure to check with them to see. If they don't have them, they can certainly get them, either from us or their favorite distributor. If you don't have a local quilt shop, know that all of the patterns are available for pre-order on the Biani website too, and we'll begin shipping them to retail customers in July. 
Just know that any order that includes one of these patterns will be held until the pattern is available for shipment. So if you are ordering other items, you may want to place separate orders. Otherwise, everything will be held until the patterns are available for shipment. We'll be taking an in-depth look at each of these patterns during Live with Annie in July, starting with Night and Day on July 6th, so be sure to join us then. Let's move on now to our featured local quilt shop of the week. At By Annie, we're all about supporting local businesses, especially local quilt shops. They truly are the backbone of our quilting communities. One way we do this is by hosting an annual local quilt shop contest, which we celebrate in February. During the contest, we encourage sewists to vote for their favorite local quilt shop and share a little bit about what makes them special. Then, to continue the fun and support of local businesses, each week we highlight a different store during Live with Annie. As I said earlier, we are in Chicago this week for a show that runs through Friday. And on Saturday, I will travel to Intercourse, Pennsylvania, where I'll be visiting the Old Country Store. We have been planning this trip since long before the pandemic, so I am really excited to finally be able to go visit. I will be presenting a lecture on Monday night and a Catch-All Caddy 2.0 class on Tuesday. Both the lecture and class are sold out, so lucky you if you are registered, and I can't wait to see you there. The Old Country Store has been a grand prize or runner-up winner in every single LQS contest we've held since we started over five years ago. And having dealt with them over the past few weeks to plan this trip, I can certainly understand why. They are so professional in everything that they do. Chosen by Better Homes and Gardens Quilt Sampler magazine in the spring-summer of 2017 as one of the top 10 quilt shops in the United States, the store is well known locally and nationally for their extensive fabric selection from leading manufacturers like Moda, Free Spirit, Andover, Robert Kaufman, Riley Blake, and Timeless Treasures, among others. The store caters to fabric customers at their intercourse location, but also serves customers across the U.S. through their online store, oldcountrystorefabrics.com, where the same great service, prices, and selection can be found. They carry a vast array of sewing notions, pre-cuts, patterns, and quilting books and kits. Owners Dean and Jan Mast, along with their staff, provide a combined 100 plus years of experience and graciously offer knowledgeable assistance to customers in all steps of the quilting process, from choosing colors to calculating fabric yardages. Beginner and experienced sewists appreciate the wide range of classes offered by the store. The sewing classroom features Bernina sewing machines and a full range of amenities, including cutting tables, design walls, ironing stations, and off-street parking. They also offer long-arm quilting services with easy online submission and completion in two to three weeks. Return shipping, batting, and thread are included in their pricing. On their birthday month, customers are treated to their choice of three fat quarter singles, free of charge for a birthday treat. Facebook Live videos, new and nifty, are offered quarterly as a way of introducing customers to what's new and trending in fabric, kits, patterns, notions, and the quilting world. Join the Old Country Store's next Facebook Live on Thursday, September 1st at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Old Country Store has some really fun classes coming up. Modern Hexi Stocking on July 9th with instructor Andrea Hoke, where you'll learn how to stitch hexes with a modern spin, just in time for creating new Christmas stockings. By Annie Stash and Dash Organizer on July 16th, also taught by Andrea Hoke. This class is a great introduction to Biani patterns, soft and stable, mesh, vinyl, and zippers. After tackling this small organizer, you will have learned the basic techniques for any Biani pattern. 
In October, Sue Pritt of Sweet Season Quilts will teach a one-day laser-cut applique class, and there will be multiple kids' classes throughout the summer for children ages 9 to 13 years. For those who like to improv, Kelly Meenix teaches the popular Free Pieced Trees class on September 10th. Learn to work without rulers and get better at making decisions as you sew and improv your way to a beautiful forest of trees. You can register for classes online at theoldcountrystore.com. Remember, too, that the Old Country Store will have a biannual truck show in the store throughout the month of July, so be sure to stop in and check it out and tell them Annie sent you. Thank you again to everyone who joined us today. We'll be back next week at 2 p.m. Mountain Time with another fun episode of Live with Annie. Since I'll be on a plane home that day, Casey has volunteered to take over the live. He will share tips for using the Biani website, so bring your questions for Casey. And until then, happy stitching! <music>